Hi, I'm Dr. Yusuf. I'll be presenting this case of uh, small pupil with posterior cyanica, uh, complicating a previous CIAC uh, uh, peripheral idiotectomy that was done years ago. Um, if the yeah, posterior capsulotomy is not followed by good uh, steroid treatment, uh, you end up with uh, with this posterior cyanica, small pupil shallow chamber, and he uh, has uh, a large tritium. Uh, that he was not interested in removing uh, prior to the surgery. Uh, usually, if the tritium is very significant, we'll, uh, we uh, we remove it first and repeat the ion master uh, after a couple months of from removing it to if it's causing high corneal astigmatism. But this patient wasn't interested in that, and she just wanted to get cataracts out. So uh, the case was started as usual uh, because of the small pupil and the advanced nature of the cataract. Uh, the vision blue was used to stain the capsule. Uh, there was an air bubble in the in the injection itself. It wasn't an intentional thing. I usually inject the vision blue behind the the iris in these cases to stain the ca the, the capsule that's not visible at this stage. <coughs> then this was followed by breaking the cyanicia uh, using the uh, the uh, this coat to break the cyanicia and maintain the pupil dilation. Uh, after this breaking, the pupil became reasonably good and wide enough to proceed with the surgery without having the iris uh, or uh, pupil support. Uh, uh, it's so, so uh, the uh, the case was uh, continued the same way as usual. Capsule axis was done uh, to measure 5.5 millimeters in diameter, and uh, hydrosection, hydrodilation was done, and the lens was implanted at the end as usual. Uh, this is the, the Beeler three prong uh, dilator to dilate the pupil. Uh, I'm, I don't use that much uh, anymore, uh, but for these cases with with fibrotic pupils, sometimes just stretching the pupil with Beeler or with two uh, hooks would uh, do the trick, and you don't need to put. Uh, uh, iris retractors or or uh, Meliugan ring or pupil expansion ring, the Morcher pupil expansion ring. Uh, this is different from uh, pati patients with IFAS, intraoperative floppy iris syndrome due to Flomax or any other of the, of the me medication that cause uh, uh, alpha blockers, the uh, alpha blocking effect. The uh, the difference is that th those pupils with IFAS, you should not touch it with stretching or uh, or with hooks uh, to with with uh, stretching to, because this will produce a much more aggressive uh, floppy iris and it doesn't work. Uh, so this is a major difference between the two kinds of the pupil. So the pupil due to small pupil due to scarring, like this case, uh, can be stretched easy and the surgery can proceed even without uh, a pupil support. But uh, the cases that are due to Flomax or any other medication that cause the floppy iris. The, the pupil should not be touched and we should be expanded using the uh, the pupil expanders uh, expanders either the, the older uh, iris hooks or the uh, mortar pupil expansion ring or the most recent uh, the Maliugan uh, uh, pupil expansion ring which is my, my preference at this stage because with the Maliugan you, you get the support in the sub incisional area with the mortar you don't have this kind of support uh, and the, with the Maliugan, the profile of the ring is much thinner, so even a thin uh, or shallow chamber like this case could have been done with the, the with the Maliugan, not with the mortar, because the chamber is very shallow here. And that's why she had the, the uh, or he had the uh, preferred iridectomy uh, years ago uh, for angle closure. Uh, case pro uh, proceed as usual here with this with small people like this, you can. Uh, just uh, proceed uh, and be just be careful and take your time in doing the FACO and the, uh, to remove the epinucleus. That's what's happening now. Uh, the, after the epinucleus is removed, uh, I use the J cannula for cortical cleanup, and this is a good way to, to use the J cannula because you don't see very well to do I, IA safely. But with the J cannula, you can do that blindly. But the trick here is that to try to pass the J cannula underneath the, the uh, underneath the. Uh, uh, the uh, capsular axis edge and uh, to inject uh, just enough uh, force not to produce uh, iris prolapse. The iris prolapse is a problem with J cannula when, when it's uh, a case of IFAS so uh, you have to be extra careful with, 
with those cases but so for such a case you can produce a very clean capsule using the J-Calia blind day but the, the trick again is to make sure that it's in the bag and not in the sulcus so in this case you I start from the center and start to inject to inflate the get the uh, the capsular bag a little bit and then move it to the periphery where I don't see it and just be extra careful when it w and watch what's happening with you inject the lens is implanted as usual the three-piece lens uh, that stage was, was of my routine was uh, the ZA 9003 uh, the, te the technus uh, uh, lens the three-piece uh, so it's a good lens IA is done after uh, finishing the uh, lens implantation here uh, a lot of times you have this a lot of this elastic hiding behind the iris and around the iris so these patients they usually end up with a little bit of higher pressure post-operatively uh, so the, the wounds are hydrated as usually use the avalox to hydrate the wounds uh, thank you very much